percent of all births are out of wedlock. It's amazing. So we have a fracture of the family. And so what's happening in the church is there's, we try to have a restitution of the family, at least the family of God, for people very, very broken. But we don't have to look outside into other people's lives. We can look at our own lives too. We come broken. I come broken. And you come broken. And it's because God in some way has healed us that we're able to offer this overflow to others and a testimony of not only God's redemption, but that we can say, He healed me. He gave me the grace to forgive. One of my favorite stories is uh, in the scriptures is taken from Luke 15, 11 to 31, and it's the parable of the lost son. And here we have the, the father, two sons, the older son and the younger son. And the younger son comes to his father, asks for all of his inheritance, takes it, and goes off. The older son stays in the field doing everything that he's supposed to do, while the younger son goes off and spends all the father's inheritance on riotous living. Now in Hebraic culture, his doing that almost was though to say to his father, you are dead. I don't need you, I don't want you, I'm taking what you can give me and I'm gone. And so after he spends all of his money on wild living, he has nothing even to use for food, he goes and he hires himself out to feed the pigs. Which again, in Hebraic culture, is an abomination to even be touching pigs, because pigs um, were unclean in the law. Not only does he feed the pigs, he doesn't have any food, he eats the pigs' food. But I'm amazed because the focus, all, most of the sermons I've heard about the prodigal son are about this lost boy. Well, and it makes sense, doesn't it? Because it's a trilogy of things that are lost. But very seldom do we hear about the older brother. The one when his brother returned out in the field, and his father asked him to go to get the fatted calf to slay him. And bring it because my son who was lost has now returned home. Now this father, he loved this boy. And when he saw him, he didn't just wait for him to come home. He went out and he greeted him. And we know he gave him a robe and he gave him a ring. And in this compassionate father who represents the compassion of an unconditionally loving God, this young boy was restored. And I am very, very touched because of the growth opportunity that the, young, that the older son forfeited. Now, I don't know about you, but I know there are people, family members in my own family, that have done things to me that just like the older brother, who felt violated by, by his dad, in a sense, didn't he? He felt like he was being passed over. But I have people in my family that have not done me right. And perhaps you have people in your family that have not done you right. Maybe a parent, maybe an aunt, maybe an uncle, maybe a son, maybe a daughter. And I'm not just like the prodigal son, but I had a prodigal mother who left our family when I was 16 and never came home. And at a, at a time in my life, from this passage, where God spoke to me and said, you have got to forgive her. And I had to look her up and find her. I wasn't even sure where she was living. And to be able to go to her, um, she was living at the time in Rochester, taken a different identity, changed her name, um, 
taken up with another man, totally did not tell him anything about her family, and, uh, and he had to go. Because I realized 